Good evening, church. Today, September 1st, 2024. My sermon, as you notice, I've been working on Revelations. My sermon today is on Revelations chapter 1 verse 12 to 18. The Lord of glory in his ministry. Back to the future sermon 5. In our last meeting church we considered the messages of verse 12 to 17. In those verses, Jesus Christ is pictured in all his glory. In verse 12 to 16, John depicts the Lord of glory in his ministry. John attempts to describe the risen, glorified Jesus. As he does, he pictures for us the Jesus we will see when we arrive in heaven. I don't know about you, but I look forward to the day when I see him as he is. Because I will be like him on that day. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. Then, church, in verse 17, John shows us the Lord of glory in his mercy. John sees Jesus and faints uh, dead away. Jesus in grace and mercy rises up his servants and speaks peace to the heart of John. What a savior we have. I praise his name for the times he has reached down to me and lifted me up in my heart. For where would we be if the Lord never showed up in our hearts to whisper sweet peace to our souls? In this last section, John describes the Lord of glory in his ministry. Having told us about how Jesus appears and how he encourages his saints, these verses tell us who Jesus is and what he does and what Jesus does. Excuse me, oh, look looking for my cell phone. That got lost. Excuse me. In his, in, he is reigning one. I am the first and the last. John reminds, John reminded that Jesus is the author and the finisher of all things. He is the one who has always been and the one who will always be. He was there in before and beginning, and he will be there after the end. Jesus stands as the great bookend on either end of history. Kings may come, and kings may go, but Jesus has, is, and will reign forever. He is timeless and he is eternal. What we have here is nothing less than a clear claim of deity by the Lord Jesus. The title, The First and the Last, is found in the Old Testament three times. It is a title that refers to Jehovah God. This title is used by the Lord Jesus three times in the book of Revelations. 
He is telling us, his people, that he is co-equal and co-eternal with God the Father. He is reminding us that he is God and that he is in control. I sure am glad that he has the will. In the early days of the automobiles, a Model T Ford stalled in the middle of the road. He couldn't get it started no matter how hard he cranked nor how much he tried to advance the spark or adjust things under the hood. Just then, a chauffeur limousine pulled up behind him. A weary, energetic man stepped out from the back seat and offered his assistance. After tinkling for a few moments, the stranger said, Now try it. Immediately the engine leaped to life. The well-dressed individual then identified himself as him before. I designed and built these cars, he said, so I know what to do when something goes wrong. God, church, come on now. The creator is with us to fix what is broken in our lives. Come on. Now. The people of the Lord need not fear anything can arise in life or death. For Jesus stand on either end of each, and he controls the middle two. Jesus is the hub around which the wheel of time retorts. He is before all, above all, under all, around all, and after all. He is all in all. He is the source and sum of everything. He is in control of life, church, and nothing happens without his approval. He is the redeemed one. We can always go to Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and get back what I said up. I am he that lived and was dead. Jesus died. But his death was like no other death in the history of the world. He died not for himself, but he died for others. He went to the cross to pay a price he did not owe for a people who owe a price they could not pay. He gave his all for those who had nothing to offer. He paid the whole price to redeem his people from their sins. He placed himself between us and our sins. God said, let us form man in our image. The, word, the world says, we must conform man in our image. The devil said, I deform man by sin. Education says, let us inform man by knowledge. Society say we will reform man by culture. Only Christ says, I will transform man by my great love and by my death on the cross. He accomplished through one offering what millions of gallons of animal blood had never been able, nor would he be able to do. He paid the full redemption price for all those who would call on him by faith. For many years in the marketplace of Rodham Holland stood an old, old corner house known as the House of a Thousand Terrors. In the 16th century, King Philip II of Spain ruled over Holland and his bearing of the Duke Dutch. He tortured, maimed, imprisoned, and exiled thousands. When the people rose up in defiance, 
he sent a Spanish army under the Duke of Edo to put down the rebellion. The city of Rodan held out vanity for some while. And then finally fell before the Spanish army. The victors went from house to house, threatening out the citizens. They slaying them wholesale in their houses. In one house, a group of men, women, and children huddled together. A thousand terrors gripped them their hearts as the Spanish soldiers approached. Suddenly, a man, suddenly a young man had an idea. Taking a young goat belonging to the premises, he killed it, and then with a broom swept this blood under the door of the house. Then they waited breathlessly as footsteps approached. Soon the Spanish was bantering at the door. Then they heard one of them say, look at the blood running under the door. Come away. Men, the work here is already done. A little later, the army withdrew, allowing a band of thankful people to emerge safe and sound. They lived because a goat blood, uh, a goat had died. Hallelujah. It was the blood of a little lamb that caused the deaf angel to pass over the children of Egypt from Exodus 12. It was the blood of bulls, goats, calves, pigeons, and turtle doves that atoned for the sins of Israel for many, for many hundreds of years. But it is the blood of Jesus and only the blood of Jesus that washes away the stains of sin and makes man a new creature. It is only the blood of Jesus that caused sin, that, that can save a lot sinner and make him into a saint of God. Only the blood of the Lamb of God can do that. Many days ago in Detroit, Michigan, the well-known evangelist, Dr. Charles Finney, preached on the text, the blood of Jesus Christ. God's Son cleanses us from all sin. After the service, a stranger asked Dr. Finney to walk home with him. Advised against it by church officials who knew the man, Dr. Finney went with him anyway, ushering the preacher into, preacher into the rear of a building. The stranger locked the door, put the key in his socket, and said, don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to ask a few questions. Do you believe what you preach tonight? Dr. Finley said, I most certainly do. The man continued, church. We're in the back of a salon. Our southern proprietor mother came in here, laid their babies on the counter, and begged me not to sell liquor to their husbands. I turned the deaf ear to their cry. We see to it when a man leaves here, he's well under the influence. More than one night a man leaving here has been killed by the express at the tracks. Dr. Finney tell a man, can God forgive a man like me Dr. Finley replied, I have but one authority. The word of God which says the blood of Jesus Christ. God's Son cleanses us from all sin. But that's not all, added the man. In another room, we run a gambling hall. If a man doesn't spend all his money on liquor, we bring him back here and with mixed cards see to it that he frees out 
his last dollar, we send him home penniless to a hungry family, Dr. Finley. I'm so I'm the sole owner. Tell me honestly, can a man forgive a man with a heart like that? Can God forgive a man with a heart like that? Again, Dr. Finley replied, I have heard one of thought. The word of God, which says, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sins. The man spoke again. That's not all. Across the street is my home where I where live my wife and little daughter. Neither one has had a kind word from me for five years. Their bodies bear marks of my brutal attacks. Dr. Finley, do you think God could forgive a man with a heart like that? Dr. Finley heard lower, lower. His eyes filled with tears as he said, my friend, you have painted one of the darkest pictures I have ever gazed on, but I still have one authority which says the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. The man opened the door ushered the preacher into the night and did not leave that room till daybreak. He did not leave until he had reaped all decks of all decks of cards and poured the content of beer and liquor bottles down the sink. After he was finished, he locked the saloon and crossed the street, entered the house, entered his house, and his, and sat down in the living room. His little girl called Daddy. Mother says breakfast is ready. When he answered his little girl kindly, she ran back to her mother. Daddy spoke kindly to me. Something is the matter. The mother followed her little girl to the living room. The man weakened them both, taking one on each knee. He explained to their amazement that he had a new that they had a new husband and daddy had in had in. I've done with that business across the street. The man later became a member then an official in a lead in Detroit church. When asked to tell how his life was changed, he would have replied, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sins. The people of the Lord need not fear sin. Satan on the sentence imposed on sin because Jesus defeated the power of sin, the prince of darkness, and, and the, he eliminated the penalty of sin, church. Jesus enters death of his own free will. He stepped into death, and in the moment of his greatness, greatest weakness, he forever conquered all the animals of the soul. He is the resurrected one. I am he that lived and was dead. And behold, I am alive for everyone again. Again, Jesus uses a divine title to describe himself. He says, I am the living one. This title was used by the ancient Jews to distinguish Jehovah from the false god of the heathen. They were dead. Uh, they were dead wood, stone, and, me and metal. Jehovah is a self-existent, uh, uh, ex existent, eternal one. Jesus 
does something no one else has ever done. He entered death in his own time and in his own way, having accomplished everything he can to this earth to do, and then he walked out of death when he was ready. He died on the cross, and then he rose again from the dead. Thank God he lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lived today. He walks with me and talks with me along, along life narrow. Excuse me. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I would like to know what the greatest miracle of the redemption story is. The greatest miracle is, is not that Jesus rose again from the dead. After all, the living one would be hard to hold on hold in a tomb. The greatest miracle is that God would enter humanity, the, uh, live among men, suffer the agony of the cross, and taste the death for every man. The greatest miracle of the redemption story is God in human flesh, reconciling the world unto himself, not imparting their trespasses unto them. The greatest miracle is that God brings a being found in fashion as a man. He humble himself and become obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The people of the Lord need not fear death, for Jesus has conquered it for them. He is the remaining one. I am alive for everyone. Jesus proclaimed himself to be the one who will never taste death again. He lives and he will live forever. The cities of refuge. The person who fleed the city of refuge for protection was allowed to stay in that city until the high priest died. He was absolutely safe and protected. His life was bound up with that of the high priest. Folks, those who have fled to Jesus for refuge enjoy safety and protection as for as long as Jesus, our high priest, shall live. Since he will never die again, he have absolute eternal security. When when every, when every ruler and every subject has faded from the fabric of the ages, when every rich man and every poor man has been erased from the, from the memory of time. When every kingdom and every deed has been forever diluted by the streams of history, Jesus Christ still be Lord and he will still be God. He is the remaining one. Don't worry about something happening to him. When the dust of time has been swept away into the vast disputes of eternity, Jesus still, Jesus will still be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That ought to bring comfort to every child of God and strikes terror into the hearts of every demon and sinner. The people of the Lord need not fear life, for Jesus is alive. He is with them and he is ever taking thought for them. He is the releasing one. I have the key of hell and of death. Keys speak of accents and a thought. I have keys right here because I possess the keys. I have access to the things connected with the key because I have those keys. I can go places others are not allowed to go. The same is true with Jesus. Jesus Christ decided all the issues of life and death. He determines who lives and who dies because Jesus enters death and conquers it. He possessed the key of death. 
because he entered the place where the dead are reside and walked out. He holds the key of hell. Jesus is a key man. He is a man, a, a good man to know. The word hell in this verse is the Greek word high, which it does not refer to the place of punishment, but but to the real rim of the dead. You see, death is the connection and hell is the place. And Jesus holds the key to both. Jesus Christ possesses the keys to every tomb, graveyards and burial places in the universe. He knows where every body, every bone, every ash, and every pit of dust lies on this earth. One day, church, Jesus will open all the graves. His people will arise again and join him in their glory. Praise the Lord. We do not have to worry about our loved ones who die in him. However, those who have died in their sins will also come out of their graves one day. But they will face Jesus in judgment. Friends, it pays to know Jesus Christ. He is the key man. Because I know him. I cannot go to hell. He has locked the door because I know him. I cannot go to heaven. He has unlocked the gate of that city for his children. Do you know? that he holds the key to every grave in the world. He is able to raise our loved ones from the dead. Do you know that he has unlocked the door between life and death, all, the, all his people? When I reach the end of life, I will be able to step out of, out of this earthly life into that heavenly life because he has already opened the door. The people of the Lord need not fear eternity, for Jesus holds the keys of death and hell. He is in control of all the issues of life and death. In the conclusion, church, when Jesus appeared to John on Patmos, John was overcome by the presence and appearance of the life and he had fainted dead away. The Lord, in grace and mercy, laid his hand on John and said, Fear not, this prize is in a tense. That means stop being afraid and don't ever fear again. If you know Jesus, church, you do not have to fear life, death, sin, Satan, or eternity. If you know Jesus, you know the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace can drive away all fear. Maybe you have some fears you would like for him to put the rest of it. You can bring them to him and you can find the help you need. Maybe you are dealing with the greatest fear of all. Maybe you are wondering what will happen to you when you die. Jesus can give you peace in that area today. Maybe your life is filled with more questions than answers. If there is a need for peace, church, on any level, Jesus can give that to you today. He can take your fear and transform them all into knots, into no's. That was the word of God that would lean on me as I go through times of healing now. message church touch your heart in any way 
find your Bible-based church and become part of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, let the church say, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you.